Marshall Stockwell 2, one of those speakers you've been asking me for a long time to have a look at. I was aware of it, of course, for a long time, came out in 2019. My issue has always been, well, advertisers having Blumlin stereo processing. Um, and that sounds like there's lots of pseudo surround going on. I thought there was going to be problems getting, you know, quite a solid soundstage to it. People who've listened to it tell me um, strange things happen. Now, I've got on the table as well the JBL Charge 5. It's fine, great at low volumes, um, a very clear sounding speaker, but it's not, it's not audiophile. I'm not saying I'm an audiophile. I want something a bit more refined without having to spend, you know, too much money. So, £169 compares to £160 for the JBL Charge 5. And that's why I'm going to compare the two of them, because they both fit the same sort of niche for me personally. That's a travel speaker. I'm not sure if that's going to be a travel speaker. You can see it's not as thump friendly as these fantastic form factors that we do get from JBL. What you got is it's silicon. It's silicon around the edges and it's a steel metal mesh uh, grill on the front and the back. First of all, Marshall, of course, everything is made to look like their amplifiers. Marshall Amplification PLC is the company. It is actually, um, a, a, it started as a British company. It's now owned by a bigger Swedish company, Zound Industries International. So Marshall British Company, owned by a Swedish company, made in, you guessed it, made in China. Now, Alan Blumlin, the point about Alan Blumlin is he's the father of stereo processing. He died in, in, he died in June 1942. We're going back nearly 100 years. This isn't something modern, the uh, Blumlin process. So the idea that we've now got a speaker use a Blumlin process, it's, it's everything, it's all our stereo process is built on the ideas from Alan Blumlin. It was based on an equilateral triangle. You have a, a towed in speaker, a towed in speaker, and everything, to, to the listener that is, and everything was based on uh, equal, equal distance between uh, the speakers, equal distance from your ears, and then how you could start panning and how your ears lit. So it's not about a speaker, one speaker that looks like this. So what are we talking about? Uh, in the, having had a listen to it, um, I would say it, there's a lot less processing going on than I was expecting. It's clearly some reverb. So when we talk about, um, you know, creating a fake stereo image, one of the, one of the big, when you're indoors, that is, when you're indoors, one of the biggest things that's giving you your stereo image is, I've talked about it a lot because it, it's something to really take note of. Room reflections and the time, these different reflections, and, and we talk about uh, uh, first reflections, the time for, for all these the waves and the reflections to get to your ears. So you actually uh, create the stereo image by a combination of the, the reflections, uh, the timing difference to your ears, the intensity, the different, of course waves cancel each other out and you get peaks, you get dips. The intensity uh, to your ears uh, will differ and of course uh, the phase differences themselves. So psychoacoustics is an incredibly deep, fascinating subject uh, to be honest. And uh, it's worth, well worth delving into how easy it is to trick your ears and the clever things they do. Now here's the thing, this has been, to me it's been very confusing the way people talk about this speaker. Notably, they talk about it having tweeters, um, and some people say it's got the rear firing uh, woofer, and some people say it's got a front firing woofer. Well it turns out, we've got a full range driver and a woofer on the front, and we've got a full range driver and a passive radiator on the back. They're slightly offset. If I've got the, the uh, Stockwell 2 in front of me, the, the front full range driver is around here, and that ties up with the full range driver on the back being slightly to the right. So we've got, le we've got left and right. The they're slightly, the slightly one, the, the left is slightly more to the left, the right is to the right. That alone would gives you some sense of stereo. I'm not saying it's creating a fantastic stereo image, but I'm saying that's going to be part of it. The fact that there is a teeny bit of left and right separation to start with. Then you add some reverb, you're on your way to creating a fake stereo image. Now, the question is, how are you meant to listen to it? I did a breakdown of all the different ways you can listen to it. So, side on, front on, and rear on. <laughs>
So the takeaway to me was, I was expecting to get some sort of amazing stereo image, looking at it side on. Actually, if I'm listening side on, yes, clearly there's left and right, and I'm kind of in an echoey room, but it's a mess. That That's not a stereo image to me. That's an echoey kind of hall effect, but it's an absolute mess, and there's a big, uh, there's a loss of clarity for me there. Now, the biggest difference was listening from the rear, clearly more bass heavy. Listening from the front, more upper bass heavy. So more bass, more deep bass heavy, but more upper bass heavy. Now you're thinking, well, they've only got, they've got the same four inch drivers on both sides. The clarity is gonna be the same, but no. Clearly a more clarity, more sparkly, listening from the front compared to the rear. Loudest face on, makes most, most sense to me face on. Having said that, if you favor a deeper bass sound, you will like listening to it that way around, but you're gonna lose some clarity. To me, then it, it sounds, still sounds like uh, a, this should be a tweeter on the front when I'm listening that way on. So I decided this is the way I'm gonna listen, just to see, show you how that actually breaks down when we do the measurements of the frequency response. It looks like this. Default mode, front on. There is some bass adjustment going on. It's clearly more bass heavy at 40% than 60%. And by the time you hit 80% already, it's way more upper bass heavy than it is deep bass heavy. However, if you look at about 60%, it's clearly going down to around 50 hertz. That's looking pretty promising. We do have a bit of a dip in the mids and there is a peak around 10 kilohertz. But overall, it looks quite balanced, except that by the time you've hit 80%, bit upper bass heavy, but it does maintain bass all the way up to 100% volume. But again, that's upper bass. So listening to the rear side, the effect is you're increasing the deep bass compared to the upper bass. And at the same time, we're losing some of the highs. So it's more obviously deep bass heavy and you lose some fizz at the very high end compared to default mode. And when you measure it side on, well, the highs are falling off rapidly. It does not look like this is tuned to be listened side on. We do have the option of some hardware EQing on the Stockwell itself. Default position for both the bass and the treble knob is five, and the range is up to 10, just to see exactly how far we can push bass. Pushing that bass, as you can see, is not just a push, say, in the upper bass or the deep bass. It's actually increasing all the way from two kilohertz and down, and it is an increase right the way down. The biggest increase, though, yes, it is upper bass. If we push the treble, it's increasing all the way from around 400 hertz, and indeed, the higher up the scale you go, the bigger the increase. So by the time you're hitting two kilohertz, it's quite a significant increase. The settings I've settled on for front-facing listening is bass at eight and just taming the high end a little bit by setting it at four, which means it becomes a little bit more bass heavy. But I found that the best balance. So in my tests and the way I've been listening to it is, obviously we have these, you know, one of the big deals about uh, Marshall, we're getting old fashioned analog knobs on the top. The default position is uh, five, and it goes from naught to 10. Personally, I found we really need to push this to about eight to get a satisfying uh, deep rounded bass going on. Listening front on, which is my preferred way of listening, it to me, it's a little bit edgy. I wanted to back off uh, that high end a little bit, so I brought it down to four. Just to quickly go fully up into the overview of the speaker, just to tell you what's going on. This is a really good example of why, guys, you want to know what hours, and you can work everything out after that, because a lot of you who don't fully understand will see the headlines for the JBL Charge 5, 3.6 volts, but they'll headline it 7,500 milliamp hours. And then you'll see oh, 2,600 milliamp hours for the Marshall Stockwell 2, and you're going to think, oh, has it got a tiny battery, and that's got a massive battery, I'm never going to buy, but actually, they're about the same size. Actually, that's a little bit bigger because the voltage is 10.8. So really, we need to all convert these into watt hours, especially moving forward on my channel. Just understand when you start looking for battery capacities, watt hours is where it's at, because otherwise you can make that look all sorts of things uh, in specs, depending on the voltage you're quoting. So we've actually got 28 watt hours, 28 watt hours for the Stockwell 2. We've actually got 27 watt hours for the JBL Charge 5. Bigger battery in the J in the Marshall Stockwell 2. Aptex, been a long time since we could say that. We've got an Aptex. Um,
compared to the SBC, obviously I'm talking about on Android. So Aptex immediately tells me they're trying to be a little bit more serious with their speaker. No stereo pairing, oh, that's, 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 oh, that was a little bit upsetting to me. Um, we'll get on to why that's a little bit upsetting um, and why that's a, maybe for some people a deal breaker. You may be thinking, oh, it's only got uh, a USB-C connection and I can't use it a pack, but that's a two-way. So that's a two-way USB-C and you can indeed use that uh, as a power bank. You can't use either of them as a speakerphone. Now on paper, on paper, and uh, no, these things don't always translate, but on paper, we're getting 40 watts uh, amplification from the Charge 5, only 20 watts. Only 20 watts amplification on paper for the, uh, for the Marshall Stockwell 2. In terms of weight, well, it is heavier. It's uh, 1.4 grams compared to basically one kilo for the Charge 5. Yeah, that floats. Not only does it can it be dropped in water, but it will float. Oh, you drop that in, in uh, water, in anything, you, you know, that you say goodbye to your warranty. It's IPX4, no, that's not good. In terms of drivers, it is, they aren't tweeters on the Stockwell 2. They are full range drivers. We've got two 50 millimeter full range drivers. We've got the 76 millimeter woofer, and then we've got a passive radiator on the back. In terms of uh, watching YouTube, my test for Bluetooth latency, uh, JBL Charge 5 is no good on my Android, 125 milliseconds I'm getting, but 50 milliseconds for Stockwell 2. That's really, really good. So I talked about my EQ. I've shown you how it sounds different from each side, but I'm gonna compare now just that default mode um, against my EQ. Oh, little tweak in terms of the treble going from the five going yeah going from five to four you're losing a def decibel off the high end going from five to eight on the bass I'm gaining a decibel when you put the two together that to your ears is going to sound like a two decibel I'm getting on for a two decibel gain uh, in the low end because less a high end that you're hearing it's going to make it sound relatively more bass heavy about 50% volume for both of them, but there is a difference in volume between these two speakers. So we're talking 40% versus 50% and then normalized.
in terms of how much bass are they both producing, it is exactly the same. Minus 17 luffs for both of them, 30 to 200 hertz. Stockwell, a little bit more in the upper bass, but overall, uh, they are the same. But we've got a decibel more in terms of the highs. Makes it sound a lot crisper, a lot clearer, doesn't it? On the JBL Charge 5, when it's lacking on the Stockwell 2, I perceive that as a little bit thicker in the base for the Marshall Stockwell 2. Now the measurements don't tell, don't say that, but my ears say that, that's how I hear it, simply because we've got less in terms of the actual highs. When you listen, oh, I can hear all, all that processing going on uh, on the Marshall Stockwell 2, all that reverb, but well, it's not very natural. You listen to the JBL Charge 5, yes, much clearer, oh, it's much cleaner. But hang on a second. Now, let's listen to these two again, but with the original track. job of capturing that echoey nature that's actually in the track compared to what this now a lot of you will say oh you can't hear, it's all mono it doesn't matter if it's mono or not you can't hear the differences can we put that one to bed now the fact that that's mono and that you've got no chance of a stereo image you're losing all that echo it's completely cleaning it out and it's actually making it sound very uh, very sterile, sterile and lacking any atmosphere that was in the actual track. That echoey, stereo-y thing that re almost kind of sounds like reverb is actually in the track itself. So mono against stereo, even though it's configured in a funny old way, matters in the real world. I will add though, however, in terms of the bass kicking in and out, the dynamics of that bass I think was captured best on the JBL Charge 5. A little bit thicker and slower, the bass on the Stockwell 2. Okay, let's go on, for me, real world volumes, around 75%. <laughs> Truth, you're right. 
Americans carefully then execute them daringly They say I act recklessly, but that's why I'm effective See, you can't predict my tendencies, I offer no transparency Some people think I'm lost, others still gonna be a legend I'm never gonna stop till I'm one above second In my thoughts at the top, but my mind stay present yeah, Don't let your dreams yeah, stop, cause yeah, dreaming is a blessing they tell me all the same Tell me I won't make a name But it's not about the fame It's about keeping me sane So I stay within my lane Feel my blood pump through my veins Feel adrenaline, no pain Welcome all to my domain yeah. So let me break, break, break it on down for you I ain't never giving up, I ain't never you know giving up take, take, taking that crown from you I ain't worried about nothing Break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up. I ain't never giving up. You know I'm taking, taking, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you. I ain't gonna make friends. Don't be scared. The charge five centers its base peak around that 70 hertz mark whereas the stockwell it's a bit thicker and wider the base and where the charge 5 is already rolling off from 60 hertz it's holding up more on the stockwell 2 by the time you're hitting 50 hertz we're at minus 35 here on the stockwell 2 we're around minus 37 on the charge 5 so about a 2 db difference at 50 hertz by the time you hit 40 hertz is 7 decibel stronger on the Stockwell 2, but of course it is rolled off, but not that rolled off that you can't hear it. Whereas the Charge 5 is pretty much rolled off, but the Stockwell 2 holding up much better in the very deep bass. Otherwise, it's the upper bass and the lower mids where the Stockwell 2 is stronger, but overall there are more highs on the Charge 5. So I already said, listening front on, it's going to... The upper bass is going to dominate on the Stockwell 2. You can turn it around and the deeper bass will dominate but you're gonna lose some clarity doing it that way. There is, a, JBL being JBL, there is a big 60 hertz peak on the JBL Charge 5, which, which means it's gonna be stronger in terms of mid bass. But after you've come off that peak 50 hertz and below, the Marshall Stockwell 2 is holding up. At the point when, when we're going 50, 40 hertz, we're completely rolled off on the Charge 5. It's, you're not gonna hear it. You still hear the deep bass, even down to 40 hertz. I'm not saying it plays meaningfully down, but it's not completely rolled off. 50 hertz you can certainly hear. There's a lot more going on. For me, for serious, listen, it's far more satisfying uh, than the JBL Charge 5. I do like the JBL Charge 5. It is crisper, but it completely lacks, for me, the, the atmosphere and the, and the mids. This is upper bass mids uh, focused, certainly listening face on. I quite like that. If you don't particularly like that, you may prefer the JBL Charge 5. Let's try them at maximum of volume. So the JBL Charge 5, by a long way, the loudest. Minus 12 luffs, 7 decibels up on the Stockwell with its bass and treble maxed out. Using my own EQ, it's only a tad behind the Stockwell with its maxed out EQ. The peaks are the same. And the difference between maxing out the bass and the treble and having my own treble at slightly below default at 4, bass set at 8, is that even though bass here is 10, bass here is 8, I've actually got less bass, not by a huge amount, but less with the bass turned up even more. We're losing it in 
Upper bass 29.2, that's about half a decibel down on the stop well with bass at eight. And in the lower mids, mids as a whole, minus 22.9, getting on for a decibel behind the stock well with my EQ compared to stock. So what's happening? The ha what's happening is once you set treble to max, it's favoring the treble over the bass. If I had to quickly switch between the two, you can see the treble, well, the high end into the brilliance range is extended when we are maxing it out. But the bass, look at the upper bass. We've got less upper bass. So I mean less mids, and there is the problem. No point in maxing out the bass of the treble because it's going to favor treble over bass. You're going to have less bass. So takeaway is JBL Charge 5, an on-axis speaker is way louder compared to the Stockwell when we're only looking at on-axis. But of course, it's 360 degree speaker to an extent, and, and the differences are going to be when you are moving around the speaker. Now, JBL Charge 5 goes a hell of a lot. Seven decibels in luffs, it's going louder. That's a lot. Uh, even 20 watts versus 40 watts. The difference is more than I was, because to me that never even went as loud as what I would expect from 40 watts. The difference is huge to, to me, especially from what I was expecting. Hey, hang on a second, Al. That's, if you're listening on axis, the speakers are on, the drivers are on axis. And this is a three, advertised as a 360 speaker. Obviously it does sound different depending on which, however you're listening to it. Maybe that's the point here because I'm, we're losing the full range driver that's firing back. We're losing some volume. Maybe that's where we're losing out. So let's have a listen. Listening to the rear was a surprise to me. The JBL Charge 5 is still louder. However, it's not much of a listen. You, you completely lost all clarity. And the difference in volume now is not that great. It's two decibels. So it has evened things up. It's, it's, that's still a, a decent listen uh, from the rear. So if you're moving around the room, whether you're front or back, you're going to get a decent listen. Whereas on the, on the sides, uh, the JBL Charge 5 is still massively, you know, I mean, lording it over the Stockwell 2 because that's a mess from the side and that's much louder and you still get clarity. So I can only say if you're listening at maximum volume, the only time the Stockwell 2 is going to make sense if volume counts is you're literally moving around the room because it still sounds good from the back and the difference in volume isn't that great anymore and you've got no clarity at all once you, you're to the, the rear of the JBL Charge 5. Uh, I have been surprised by the, J, by the Marshall Stockwell 2 I think it's a serious listen. 
I'm not really, obviously there is some reverb going on. It's not quite like having any tight image. But this, this is a serious listen. I, I'm really enjoying listening to it. The bass, I mean, I, it's a really tight bass. Clarity is there, the mids are there. It's not going loud, is it? So if you're, if you, if you're gonna just rock out and you want a party, that's not the speaker. And I mentioned right at the beginning, no stereo pairing. Oh my God, because I can only imagine two of those for you know a little bit more volume and even more of a proper stereo image could have been the game changer for uh, for the Stockwell 2. By the way, that's a, a leather strap. Um, I really enjoy it. Okay, it's a funny old form factor, but quite honestly, it works. It's a, I'm not gonna say, ah, oh, I wish I could drop it in water. You know, you don't really want to be dropping your speaker in water anyway. So this does fulfill a niche that I was looking for. It's a nice little compact portable. By the way, that's a lot smaller than I was, and I've seen it, people holding it. But when I got my hands on it, maybe because it looks like the bigger amplifiers, but it was still a lot more, a lot smaller and more compact than I was expecting. So it's a small, compact travel speaker to which I can have a serious listen, you know, and not just have a little bit of a party and a little bit of fun. This, 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 I'm really, really pleased uh, for this, and I'm thinking maybe I need to try some more of the, uh, the Marshall speakers, but unfortunately, they're not the cheapest on the block. So this is supposed to be the conclusion. The conclusion is I would I definitely recommend this speaker. Just know its limit limitations. Uh, and is it my pound for pound champion? No, because of the, the price and the volume's not there. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you again. I ain't got that life. I ain't got that life. I ain't a project wife, I'm a logic right because I'm not your type. I ain't got that life. I ain't got that life. Sorry, my I ain't get it right. I'ma just live my life. I ain't about that. I ain't about that life. Uh.